So, dear friends, before having the well-earned double espresso after lunch, I will try to indulge you with some words on the posterior um, ankle uh, region. So I would try to run over with you a small introduction to talk a word on functional anatomy, etiology, clinical features, surgical procedures, and then show the new extensions towards indications with this technique. Now, when we talk about posterior ankle impingement, we talk about a pure mechanical conflict due to a repetitive hyperplantar flexion of the ankle. It consists of about 4% of all sports-related ankle injuries, and we have been shown very uh, uh, nicely the advantages of arthroscopy after the revolution, as Dr. Golana shows it, by the two portal techniques since, 90, since 2000. Now, it's really easy when you talk about impingement to see if there are mechanical conflicts here on the anterior part of the ankle. That's not so hard. But what about the posterior part? I think we all agree that when we look on this X-ray, we will not discover specific findings that can relate towards any injury that is shown by the, the, the athlete. Now, when we do a PIM view, it's kind of an uh, oblique view that was shown for the anterior part by Dr. Toll. Um, then you can see these images, and it's the same patient. And when you, have the, when you inhibit the superposition of the fibula on this X-ray, you can really see the pathology entering there. So again, a classic X-ray can tell you a lot. I don't have to tell you a lot about the anatomy shown by the nicest pictures ever on the ankle by Dr. Golano, that the neurovascular bundle is the region at risk for posterior ankle impingement uh, treatment, and that we aim for the flexor hallucis, we don't go medial from it, and then we're in the safe zone of our working area. Now, for the arthroscopists, there are three main domains of interest. It's the tibiofibular region of ligament, it's the intermalleolar, and it's the posterior talofibular, because there we know in which area we are working. So it's a good anatomical landmark for us. So what about the etiology of this problem, this posterior impingement problem? It's due to repetitive hyperplantar flexion of the ankle. It is shown when it's considered a bony lesion due to two things, an ostrigonum or a hypertrophic talar process. And we mainly encounter it in ballet, football, cycling, swimming, acro gym, all type of sports that are, in a way, showing repetitive hyperplantar flexion moments in the ankle. What is posterior impingement? I tried to show it with one of the videos that we made. This is the flexor hallucis longus. You've already seen him on the pictures with Pau. But here you can see the kind of yellowish uh, region on the tendon showing elastine due to uh, friction from the bone on the tendon, and then here you can see the impingement itself, the muscle tendinous uh, junction uh, is really impinged due to the bone. This is what we call posterior impingement of the flexor hallucis longus. Now you know it's in ballet dancers and uh, hyperplantar flexion uh, movements of sports, but here in Qatar we have a particular uh, type of problem, and it's what I call the Louboutin's disease. We call it the Qatari posterior impingement because the ladies tend to have a quite uh, hyperplantar flexion uh, position in their shoes. Now, when we talk about ostrigonum, it's considered as a fragment on the posterior part that can impinge during plantar flexion with uh, the distal part of the tibia. You can have it as an ostrigonum or as a hypertrophic tailor process. Now, when you consider an, an image like this, this is how it looks like clinically. It's very, I will put the sound down. So here, we will just perform a plantar flexion of the ankle, and you will see the inhibiting uh, movement of the patient. This is what true posterior impingement looks like. And that's the bony mechanical conflict that impinges on the posterior side and gives this uh, pain problem. When we treat it surgically, this is the position that we aim for. The foot is relatively uh, off the table, and we have a support that can easily divert the position of the ankle towards plantar or dorsiflexion. We use the malleoli of both sides to aim our portal position, 
And as Dr. Galano said, it's really important to stay close to the Achilles tendon, but not too close because then you can't divert with your working area and your two portal technique. So the portal is of most importance. So I also have to thank Diana Sheik for making these two knives web graphics uh, to really show how we work. It's important to, be a, to have a safe procedure. So what do we do? We aim for the first web space when we enter the ankle on the posterior side. And this is where we enter and we stay relatively uh, lateral to the FHL. And then we have here the bone. Once we've seen this area with FHL and bone, then we determine our working area. We really come from the first web space towards the more oblique uh, angle. And when we use this oblique situation, we pull back our uh, scope. We tend to uh, go in an oblique 45 position. And then this is our working area. This is how we do it. Now, if you look at images from that, we start with localizing the FHL, the flexor helicus longus. And we see here nicely the bony impingement onto the tendon that can be the trigger for the posterior impingement problem. Now, if we release it's from its attachments and ligaments, we remove it and we clean off the whole area that is not impinging on the tendon anymore. You can clearly see the adhesions and the impressions on the tendon, on its corpus, to, to really show that it can be a bony conflict onto the tendon. Now, four days after a uh, release of an impingement in the same patient, this is how it looks like. So the, I think it really shows the advantages of the arthroscopic measures that you can have little morbidity and quick return to activity. So what are the extended indications for our surgical uh, uh, problems? I will run over some of them with you now. Are there any limits with this procedure? Because now we started to use it for the flexor hallucis longus release and for the bony impingement. But with this technique, more and more indications are broadening. And that's what I would like to show you with a few cases. Now, we had a player with a chronic ankle pain with X-ray and CT that were completely normal. But when you see it on MRI, you see a stress fracture arising in the Taylor body. Now, these are some views of the same patient in which you see that there is a stress fracture of the Taylor body. When we saw it evolving during time, and although there was a good compliance with conservative measures, you could see the diastasis become more eudematous, and it showed a more likely unstable uh, stress fracture. With the posterior arthroscopic features, we can really treat it in a percutaneous way. We do the arthroscopy, we screw it, and uh, in this way we can really stabilize this condition. Another type of uh, indication nowadays is the Sedel fracture. As you know, we are very reluctant to enter the medial part of the posterior uh, region of the ankle because there is the danger zone. Medial from the flexor hallucis longus, there is the neurovascular bundle. If you open this up, you go from a broadened to a very specific narrow area that can be tricky during surgery. If you perform the posterior arthroscopy, you go from a little portal towards a very broader, broadened view. So it's easier to work with and to really uh, establish the treatment of this condition that you can see in these three uh, plain figures. Now, it's not always easy because when you have a flexor helicus longus in a sedel fracture that is full of synovitis and fluid, it can be a little bit tricky to find your way. But luckily, nature shows you the way. And when there is a conflict and you clean it up, the synovitis really tells you where you have to go. So it guides you towards the area of treatment. This is how a sedel fracture is uh, going a few days after surgery. So you can see that there's already a nice plantar flexion with both feet and a difficult one in unipodal stance. But it's quite smashing, I think, how quickly they recover from this type of surgery. Another indication with the posterior impingement uh, problems and new uh, techniques since 2000, as the perineal groove deepening, we tend to encounter, not so uh, uh, rarely, the fibular tendons to really subluxate or dislocate out of, its, uh, out of its canal. Now, with the posterior arthroscopic technique and an accessory supralateral extra uh, portal, we can nicely address the groove deepening and put it back into place. What about the intraosseous Taylor cysts? If you look at this picture, you see that we have a 
tailor dome lesion on the lateral tibio tailor uh, region of the ankle, also with cysts coming into the subchondral bone, but still there is some bone stock left. If you want to treat this, you have to do an oblique uh, osteotomy, you have to clean all of this area. And what do we tend to do? We arthroscopically, with the posterior technique, not open, we open up the lesion, we clean it, we use our trocar to go into the defect, and in this perpendicular line, we can easily go with our drill underneath the bone to enter into the tailor cyst and fill it up with bone in order to have a reestablishment. So we try to be less invasive. What about congenital anomalies? This is a patient that was sent to us for a subtalar uh, fusion. A lot of pain, chronic problems, uh, also in daily life, and a huge congenital anomaly in the posterior region of the ankle. So we went in uh, with the arthroscope in order with the idea to go for a fusion. But we saw that from the whole medial to lateral lesion, uh, region, there was uh, this exostosis, this bony prominence. And we removed the bone all the way into the subtalar uh, joint. And we saw really a tendon that was squeezed hugely. And we decided that this squeezing would be the main re reason of the pain. Of course, there was the lack of movement. But this, with treating this uh, lesion or this type of uh, pathology, we removed it completely. And we didn't have to fuse her. The patient is happy. So uh, again, perhaps a good indication uh, with broadening our techniques and our vision on this, uh, on this pathology. Now, what about the real subtalar fusion? A little word on that. When we have a case in a, in a we had a case in a 31-year-old javelin thrower, stiff subtalar mobility, sinus tarsi pain, plano valgus feet, and mechanical complaints in ankle during sports. And this is how we entered. He came for a second opinion. He had a huge metabolic uh, signal on his scintigraphia. And uh, we saw on the CT scan that he had a big medial coalition. Now, um, you can do many things with this guy. You can say you stop sports, you won't have any problem. You can say remove it openly, but with the interposition techniques, we're not so happy with the results, especially in sports. Or you can say just uh, uh, wear proper shoes, because mostly they enter with sandals. And uh, he said, he said, okay, I have good shoes. And I said, well, bring them back next time. And these are the shoes that he meant. This is what he calls shoes. So uh, he, somewhere there are regional differences. And you cannot use uh, special tailored shoes if you think they are like that. So nowadays, we tend to, uh, to treat it with a subtalar posterior facet uh, fusion through to an arthroscopic technique. And I show you how it's being done. Before the revolution that Paus talked about, there was a lateral uh, technique with a lot of complications, and that why, that's why we didn't like it at all. But since 2000, with the Van Dijk technique, we have a two-portal technique with the accessory portal, if necessary, to distract the subtalar joint, a really clean out, delaminate, remove the uh, coalition, and uh, make the fusion happen. Now, this is how it looks like during arthroscopy that we, we do. You see the real delamination of the articular cartilage on that region. We do uh, the microfracture technique in order to have bleeding bone within the two fuse region. And then we put it together. We use the um, operative tools, uh, the algorithm to fuse it in a correct way. And this is how it looks like seven weeks after surgery. There is an almost complete healing on CT scan of this region. So these are for us the advantages. And again, we broaden them with new techniques, not only coalitions, but also really arthrotic uh, regions of this posterior facet. We treat them now in an arthroscopic fashion, as you can see here. Now, one advantage, there is a bony union after uh, six to seven weeks. It's time efficient. You have a good position with the ankle, and you use an accessory portal that is not in a danger area. The downside is it's, it's that it's technically challenging. You only reduce the posterior facet for fusion and you don't always have an idea on the resection level. Now, to be complete, I uh, tell you what my friend Gino Kerkovs is working on. Nowadays, we, with our arthroscopic-induced uh, uh, tibio-tailor fusion from the anterior uh, way, we uh, discover sometimes that we cannot address the central uh, tailor body into 
the center of impact or mechanical loading. So with the technique of the posterior atroscopy, we delaminate the whole region, we put the fusion together and we come from the posterior side and we really retract the tailor body into the distal tibia in, uh, with the big advantage that we now can reduce the tailor body in a nice way. So it gives advantages. This is not a message to say that you have to do it all the times because if you have real anterior impingement problems, you better do it in the anterior fashion. But there are new indications coming up. Now, in conclusion, the, uh, for all the limits in surgical procedures, since we know now how to get into the posterior region of the ankle, we also address now the Achilles tendon and the Haglund's region. And there is new data coming up showing that in sports people, Achilles tendinopathies uh, really can be due to adherences of the plantaris tendon onto the uh, Achilles tendon. Here you can see them during arthroscopy. These are the adherences. When you remove them, you uh, can remove a lot of pain and also due to the denervation of the procedure, uh, we uh, have now indications to do it in an arthroscopic way. For the Haglund deformity, which is really a conflict of the bone on the tendon uh, at the posterior side of the ankle, we do the same. We just remove the bony prominence onto the Achilles tendon insertion. We remove it completely, we clean it out, and with the two-portal technique, uh, it's uh, feasible with uh, minimal morbidity and quick return to play. So in conclusion again, we also, since we know how to access the whole region here, we can access the tibiotalar joint, we can access the ostrigonums or the hypertrophic tail processes, the um, Haglund's deformities, and also towards the insertion of the Achilles tendon. One quick word on the cartilage. If we have a cartilage lesion that is really posteriorly located and we have a hard time with distraction and all our tools to enter from the anterior part, nowadays we treat them from the posterior region and here is where stress x-rays can really be of uh, extra advantage since this is the region that we can uh, enter from the posterior part, this is still no man's land and this is the region that we can enter from the anterior part. So we encountered tibio Taylor, flexor hollicus longus, and Haglund deformities. Its uh, posterior ankle arthroscopy is challenging, but safe, reliable, and an effective technique in the treatment of posterior ankle impingement. And if you're not convinced even now, uh, you can uh, go open or arthroscopically. And if you don't know it, you can, since the World Cup of, uh, of uh, South Africa, uh, we know that we can uh, ask the opinion of uh, how, what's his name, Paul? Uh, Paul the Octopus. Um, as a last slide, I was, uh, a few days ago, I had the opportunity to, m to look around in the Museum of Islamic Art here that I highly recommend you to do during your visit here. And this is a slide of uh, the 10th century, how people saw uh, the human body here. And you can see that already the ankles were very nicely drawn in the whole picture. Thank you. <laughs>